Welcome to AET Systems video series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about greases. And in the next couple of videos throughout this series, we're gonna get more in depth with greases. And the goal really is to help you identify what grease you need for your application so that when you go to the store, you know exactly what you need to buy. And this video is gonna be tailored toward our products or other products, it's gonna be tailored pretty much uh, in a general sense where you'll be able to identify what you need. We're not gonna push you towards one uh, product or anything like that. So let's start by discussing how we make greases. When we make a grease, we have a target in mind for the application. So let's say we're gonna make it for a compact tractor. We're gonna have low speed bearings and bushings no real requirement for high temperature and probably some decent water resistance because that's going to be something that's outside can be outside in the rain so um, for that application we'd start with a base oil and this is how we would make any grease we start with a base oil we add a thickener and then we might add some additional additives um, for tackiness water resistance etc so in this case for a compact tractor, we'd start with a base oil of around 200 centistokes for viscosity. And we're gonna add in a soap or a thickener. And there's a lot of different thickeners that we could use. It might be aluminum, might be calcium sulfonate, might be calcium complex, might be lithium, might be lithium 12, might be polyurea. And we're gonna choose, in this case, lithium, because lithium makes a very good multi-purpose grease. It has good water resistance, it has good temperature ratings, it's pretty stable. Like in the scheme of all different thickeners, lithium makes a very good multi-purpose grease. Now if we were targeting extreme water resistance, well in that case we'd probably choose calcium sulfonate because calcium sulfonate is really water resistant and it makes a really water resistant marine grade grease. Now, that ties in a little bit to something I'm gonna to get to later on with tackiness, but because a grease is tacky, doesn't necessarily mean it's water resistant. When we make a water resistant grease, it really comes down to that thickener that we're choosing to use. So let's get back to our application of a small compact tractor. We've got a medium base oil, we're using a lithium thickener because it's good multi-purpose. And what other additives are we gonna need? Well, let's put in a pressure additive because if it's got uh, bushings on the three-point arms or up on the loader, you're going to run into a fair amount of pressure. And then let's just add some antioxidation and some corrosion inhibitors. And there you'd have a really good all-around multi-purpose grease. And that shows you a little bit of the process we go through when we make a grease. So let's jump into your application. First thing you need to do to identify what type of grease you should be using, go to your owner's manual. If you don't have an owner's manual, call your dealer or call the manufacturer because it's important that you're using what they recommend. They designed it, they know what it's going to need. So a lot of cases, your owner's manual is gonna tell you an NLGI 2. NLGI ratings tell us a lot about the consistency of the grease. An NLGI triple zero is gonna be very, very thin consistency. It's almost gonna be like an oil. When we get to an NLGI-6, the consistency of that grease is gonna be like a wax. And a lot of people compare it to like a very sharp cheddar cheese. It's very dense, it's very almost crumbly like a wax would be. So NLGI-2 is the most common NLGI rating. It's the rating you're gonna see when you go to the store and it's referring to the consistency of that grease. Now, in that owner's manual, we're probably gonna see the thickener that they recommend. And a lot of times it's lithium because lithium is such a good multi-purpose thickener and it makes a great multi-purpose grease. So if it says in our owner's manual, lithium NLGI grade two, it might give a temperature rating, you know, 75 up to 375 degrees. Now we know what to look for when we go to the store. We want a lithium grease NLGI rating two with a temperature rating up to 375. And a lot of grease companies are gonna have that right on the tube or on the box that the tube of grease comes in. 
So on this, this is one of our tubes. It says right on there, base oil viscosity 200, temperature raining, and this is in Celsius, minus 30 up to plus 130. So that's uh, minus 30 Fahrenheit, roughly up to 275, 300 with a dropping point of 185. So a high temperature drop point of 375. And then it says on there, NLGI CL2. So that would tell us that that's a grease we might be able to use. And it also says on there, lithium. So that would be a good candidate for a compact tractor. Now it might also call in your owner's manual for a lithium grease with a Molly additive. Molly is a pressure additive that we use in greases a lot of the time designed for pins and bushings. Molly is kind of like a graphite, you can think of it. So it's a solid particulate that's going to allow for friction reduction. And it, it withstands pressure extremely well where other greases might fall short. So now let's get to tackiness. Tackiness is one of those things that a lot of companies push grease on. And what I really want to make you aware of with greases and lubricants is that they're like any other product. I don't care if it's beer, bubble gum, grease, t-shirts, shoes, doesn't matter. Companies are looking for a marketing point. They want to market their grease on certain factors. So <clears throat> it's important to realize that there's different aspects of grease that these companies are highlighting to market it to you. And you have to look at it and take a common sense approach to it and say, all I need is a lithium NLGI2 rated for 375 and find that grease. Um, so let's get to tackiness. There's a lot of different grades of tackiness when it comes to grease. And what I'm going to do is lay out a couple of, and just show, the, show you how they, how they act. So this is considered a buttery grease. Uh, this is our G200EP, it's an extreme pressure grease, lithium. And all these greases are actually greases that we make. Um, so this is an industrial grease. It is considered a smooth grease or semi-tacky. And then this is our superplex grease, which is extremely tacky. So we'll put some of this on here and you can actually see how stringy this is. Um, so what I'm gonna do in this test, it's, it's very simple. All I wanna show you is how they act. Um, because different applications call for tacky or non-tacky greases, and I'll show you why. So all I'm gonna do in this, and this is uh, about as simple as you can get for a test, you could do this at home and, and see how they act. With a very tacky grease, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pipe, set it down on the grease, and then just turn this pipe. And I got it rested on this rod, um, so it stays at about the same height. So as I turn this pipe, you can actually see that grease pulls up, and after only a couple turns, almost all that grease that was down on this paper is now up on this pipe. And that's because a very tacky grease is tacky back onto itself. So it's gonna bond to itself almost, and it's gonna continue to pull up more grease. I could actually sit there and turn that. If I had a larger pile of grease, I'd be able to get a, a large amount of grease spun onto this pipe. So I'll just wipe this off quick, and we'll go on to our smooth, semi-tacky grease, and we'll see how that acts. And this is gonna act pretty much the same. It's, it's very tacky. Uh, compared to a buttery grease. And as we turn it on there, uh, we can see that the majority of the grease is, is pulled up onto this pipe and there's very little left down on this paper here. So I'll push that back and spin that on there, try to, and then wipe this off again. So what do you think is gonna happen with our buttery grease? And, and remember what grease is designed to do. Grease is designed to have very good metal adhesion. I'm just going to make sure and wipe this off that we got it clean. Um, so I'll go through and do the same thing. I'll just set this down and turn this. So we can see we've got really good metal adhesion. That grease pulls up onto that pipe very well, but there is a lot left out on this paper. And it's I could keep turning this and I want 
I wouldn't get any more grease on there because the grease, a buttery grease, isn't tacky back to itself. So it's not pulling more and more and more and more grease up there. It's leaving that grease back down on that surface. It's pulling up onto that metal surface and any part of this, this metal that is, that is exposed is getting grease on it because of that great metal adhesion, but it's not pulling up more and more and more grease. And <clears throat> so let's talk about applications. There are instances where you want a very tacky grease, big pins, bushings, slideways, where you've got grease that needs to be adhered to that surface because it doesn't have something containing it. So when we think about a bearing, We've got an outer shell of that bearing. Inside are those, those ball, the balls and the grease. Now in that case, a tacky grease or super tacky grease isn't usually recommended because in that concealed environment, that tackiness is actually creating more drag, more resistance. So in a very high speed bearing or wheel bearings, a lot of times manufacturers do not recommend using a very tacky grease because you're gonna create more stress and you're actually gonna wear that product out faster uh, than you would with a buttery grease. So a buttery grease typically used for high speed bearings. Um, with EP additives, they do make kind of a good all around multi-purpose grease as well. Um, but the tackier you get, a lot of times you're narrowing the scope of your application to some extent. So a tackier grease is a little bit more specialized than buttery grease. Typically a little bit more wide open. Um, and an interesting point, like I, like I mentioned earlier, is tackiness does not correlate to water resistance. Water resistance correlates usually to the type of thickener that we're using. And then there might be another additive that we use to help it disperse water or shed water. Um, but that's just an interesting kind of like overlook of how tackiness affects uh, grease and how it reacts. So the biggest pet peeve of mine is color we get a lot of customers. And it doesn't matter if you're an individual with a tractor or you're the maintenance man at a multi-billion dollar manufacturing company. We hear it all the time. Well, we gotta use a, a red, red tacky grease because that's the best grease out there. Or we gotta use a red lithium grease or a green calcite grease. Greases are dyed. So greases naturally are the color of oil. Now in a manufacturing plant, sometimes what happens is for quality control, we have one bearing that uses this particular kind of grease and another bearing on that same machine that has to use a different kind of grease. So in that case, this grease might be red, this grease might be blue. For quality control, that person can instantly see what grease was used where and say, yes, this machine was lubricated property or properly, now it can move on down the line. Um, so in those cases, we're dying greases for a specific effect, that quality control effect, or just a very visual, instant recognition of what was used where. So <clears throat> as a byproduct of that, companies have started marketing different color greases as a marketing point. So it's important to understand that. There's no such thing as red lithium. Red lithium, or, or lithium itself is a neutral color. Um, so red became a marketing point. Green became a marketing point. And what we've seen in the market is that red greases sell the best. Doesn't matter about their actual properties, the color red sells the grease. So companies market on that fact. The color has no indication of what the grease actually is or the properties of that grease. It doesn't tell you what it's thickened with, it doesn't tell you what base oil it's used with, it doesn't tell you anything. It just says that grease is red. 100% marketing. It's like a, a, like a car. It's like saying a red car is faster than a yellow car. Um, so let's just look at this. We have G200 here. That's a, a natural colored grease. So it looks like an oil color. It's kind of a soft auburn. <clears throat> and what we're gonna do is make that into our very popular super red grease. Um, and what we have here is oil dye. I'm taking almost none on this fancy application tool called a stick. I put it in here and I start moving it around and all of a sudden, guess what we got? We took that G200 naturally colored grease and we turned it into 
our red Super G200 grease. And what I'll do is I'll just push it on this paper so you can see. Um, and it, it's important to, to realize that this is an oil dye. So it dyes oil. It's not gonna dye water, it's not gonna color steel. It's put into grease to change the color. I can make our G200 grease red, yellow, pink, purple, blue, doesn't matter, orange. This grease is orange, this one's red, this one's black. Um, we got a polymer in this one that makes it white. But <clears throat> when you look at greases, it's important to get past that mental marketing point of red, blue, green color. Color doesn't tell you what a grease is made of. Color doesn't tell you how that grease is going to act. Now there would be an exception to that with black greases. Now remember we can dye a grease black, but in a molly grease, so molly additive in there is black. It's like a graphite. And as a result of that, in 3%, this grease is black. 3% molly in this grease turns this grease black. So molly grease is always gonna be black. And that's because the additive in it. Um, but I think it's really important, especially for you know first time tractor owners, or even experienced people who've been greasing their entire life, uh, just realize what you're buying. Take a common sense, pro common sense approach to it and realize that color isn't telling you anything about that grease. The numbers are gonna tell you about that grease. So I think that's very important. The most important fact when looking for a grease is identify what you should be using in your owner's manual. It's gonna tell you what you should be using. Lithium, temperature rating X, NLGI grade, typically it's gonna be a two. When you get to the store and there's 30 greases in front of you, take a step back and just remind yourself that each one of those greases is trying to sell itself to you. Ask yourself what you actually need. If my tractor calls for a grease that's rated up to 300 degrees, the 600 high temp, super temp grease does you no good. There's no benefit to having it. The reality is most bearings run between 100 and 160 degrees Fahrenheit. If they're over that, there's an issue. Extreme high temperature greases are made for very specific applications, hydraulic hammers, or in instances where you have a lot of external friction, external heat, like in foundries, steel mills, slide rails, things like that. So just remind yourself that, that uh, you know, temperature up to seven, 800 degrees or 1,000 degrees. I saw a grease the other day at the store that said rated for 1,000 degrees. I have a lawnmower, a compact tractor, or a farm, I have zero use for that. It's a marketing, it's a marketing strategy. Okay, so just realize that greases are no different than any other product. So <clears throat> hopefully we've blasted through some of the little misconceptions and uh, common myths with grease. And the next time you go to the store or you need to buy grease, you're feeling more comfortable about what you know, you're a little bit more educated. And please let us know what else you're wondering with greases. Comment down on the section below and stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna go a little bit more in depth to greases. Thank you and we'll see you next time.